Hello everyone, and this is going to be the first game of Crossroads. And if you don't already know, the Lead Belcher Army is what I brought, a fun, interesting, very interesting list. And the first game is going to be the Lead Belchers versus High Elves. Uh, this is a really cool army. I'll do a quick showcase here. It came out awesome. This is one of the more well-done armies. Uh, I, I was thoroughly impressed. I was very glad that I got to play against something that was so well painted and definitely a fun player. He was from Canada. I forget which parts. Uh, I believe his gaming group was called the Miss Agua Battle Brothers. So uh, they had about 10 guys that came down from Ontario. I'm sorry if I'm 100% wrong, but I think that's where. And uh, yeah, so he, let's get into his list. So he was running a Elf Prince and an Elf Noble on Steed, which is going to be going into a Silver Helm bus. And we also have the Lore Master of Hoath, which is very diverse for a tournament play because you get all the different signature spells. It's just weak in terms of the plus two instead of the plus four, but you know what? When you're rolling so many different spells at such low cost values, you can get them all off. Uh, he also has the Book of Hoath, which really helps also with getting off those small um, spells. 13 Silver Helms for 15 with the Heroes, 12 Archers, 2 units of 5 Reavers, Swordmasters, Phoenix Guard, Shadow Warriors, 3 Bolt Throwers, and 2 Eagles. For my spells, I got Bone Crusher, which is not bad because Toughness 3, the 2d6 Strength 2 spell, I'll take it in case my uh, uh, level 4 caster dies. Chain Lightning, Harmonic Convergence, Wood Blast, and Comet of Castadora, the four spells I want. I can always swap out Chain Lightning for Thunderbolt, but this is awesome. Uh, I'll work with this. And not swap out as in for like a signature spell, because a signature spell is uh, Ice Shard Blizzard. I just mean they're interchangeable. So you can see I went ahead and did a nice little castle here. I have this Kemrian Quicksand ahead of me, which really doesn't encourage me to cross it at all. Uh, there is enough room for my bulls to go around. Uh, the three lead bolter units hiding in between the edge and this uh, building here. And some Noblars out to the right and in the middle just to chaff up the opponent. Uh, off screen, all the way to the far right, is a, another Iron Blaster. If he decides to commit troops to it, I'm fine. That's less troops coming at the Lead Belchers, but also I can get some nice flank shots at the Silver Helms as they approach my troops. Here is his deployments uh, from left to right Eagle, Bolt Thrower, Reavers, Phoenix Guard with the Lore Master. Uh, another bolt thrower, some archers, bolt thrower, silver helms, 15 strong with the heroes, which is going to be tough, but honestly, like I said, I think the lead belcher should be able to take them out really easy. Uh, Stormmasters of Hoath, and then more reavers. The reavers are all armed with spears instead of bows, which is nice, uh, and you can get some little flank charges in with them. We have some shadow warriors chilling out in the forest, and then a handful of vanguards. And we also nominated our targets of opportunity. You get to pick uh, three. It could be one from any of the categories, Lord, Hero, Special, Rare, Core. And if you destroy it, you get an extra 100 victory points. So he went ahead and picked this Lead Belcher unit, the Saber Tusk, and this really easy to kill Noblar unit. Not sure what I'm going to do, but I go ahead and pick the Phoenix Guard. I figured if he's got the Lord Master in there and he's it's a very good unit against Lead Belchers, he'd be sending them in. Uh, these Reavers, they should be pretty easy to kill, and then a Bolt Thrower. I figured I could shoot it down with a cannon. So Elves go ahead and actually get turn one. Uh, they got the plus one to go first also, because I've got a lot of drops. These uh, Vanguarding Reavers go ahead and go around the Iron Blaster. And here's a close-up shot of them. I think they look awesome. And this is what we have for high elf movement after turn one. Uh, the silver helms don't move up too far. They're kind of out of uh, good range of the lead belchers. And since these reavers are going to get shot up anyway, he does go ahead and screen the silver helms with them. And the same with the eagles, the eagles screening the uh, phoenix guard. So for magic, there's a handful of power dice rolled up. I don't remember how many. He goes ahead and spirit leeches the iron blaster. It's a huge gamble for me, but I go ahead and let it through because I figured I've got a handful of wounds. He's got to roll really well. I have to roll really shitty for him to kill it this turn. So I let it through and I actually roll well and I take no wounds. Uh, the same with Fireball, I take a gamble and let it through because there's some far worse spells that I can have to deal with and uh, I end up taking a wound or two here. 
Then it goes ahead and casts Shem's Burning Gaze, which is annoying because that goes ahead and proceeds to kill the Saber Tusk, which is worth not 21 points, but 121 points. But you know what? Again, four worse things to deal with. And the two bad spells I don't want to deal with, I end up dispelling, and those are my Asthma and Ice Shard Blizzard, because they both affect my ballistic skill, and I want to be able to shoot, which is what this army is all about. So going into my turn one, I move these Knobbars back so I can try to cut off the uh, fast cab. They're going to be coming behind this building. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with the Knobblars to the far right. I want to try to get them involved with the Silver Helms, cause some redirecting or some difficult terrain tests, but the position is just not going to work out. It was a bad move. In hindsight, I should have just backed them up two inches into the building. This way I could have saved them since they are a target of opportunity. Also, they can shoot out of the building if need be, and it would prevent a unit, say, the Shadow Warriors from entering the building and causing some issues. In miscellaneous shooting last turn, you can also see that the Lead Belchers had lost uh, two more guys, or two guys altogether. That was between fireball and from the uh, bolt throwers and archers. The two lead belcher units to the right back up a little bit, the one to the far left moves up and the bulls go all the way around or begin going around the quicksand which should hopefully cause some issues with the phoenix guard. He's gonna not, he's gonna have to have some decisions to make. In magic I go ahead and cast wind blast at the eagle. Uh, it ends up pushing him back into the phoenix guard uh, which caused some hits on him and then also causes some uh, lore attribute hits on him. So I go and proceed to kill the eagle, but the phoenix guard absorb the hits through the armor and the ward saves. I go ahead and roll up a comet, but he irresistible dispels it, which sucks because I got a good roll and I'm at plus four. He's only at plus two for dispelling, but uh, that's the way the ball bounces. So this is a little disappointing. In all my home games and practice games, the Lead Belchers rolled up really, really well. Lots of good hits and whatnot. Uh, th the six Lead Belchers that are chilling by the building are only able to kill four Reavers, which really sucks. And that goes back to the reoccurring theme that I mentioned earlier uh, in previous battle reports. I'm going to end up leaving a lot of units with just one guy. One guy. So instead of scoring 190 points on this unit, since it's a target of opportunity, I'm only going to score 45 because I knocked it down to less than half health, or less than 25% health, whatever it is. <laughs> Which really is annoying, and now all he has to do is run this guy away and hide him, because he's fast cav, and that's not hard to do. So this is the battlefield at the end of my turn. I cleared up some chaff, but, uh, you know, not feeling as good as I was before. Oh. Oh, and another thing worth mentioning, which really started to screw me all the game, I got the Iron Blaster here, the Iron Blaster all the way at the far right of the battlefield, and they both rolled shit. I had this flank charge, a uh, flank shot on the Silver Helms. I could have been peeling off five guys this turn. Five guys. Especially with the two artillery dice overshot, I rolled like a two, and then for the bounces, I rolled like a two and a four, and I couldn't hit the Silver Helms, and then I couldn't hit three from this freaking angle with the one from the far left, so I got really pissed about that because I would have scored up a lot of points and really weakened up his forces. In High Elf turn two, we go ahead and see that he charges me with the Eagle, and I'm not feeling too upset about this because he's got two attacks, and I've got three attacks at strength four, three attacks at strength five, and Noblar, I should be able to kill it, right? So you'd think. The Reavers go ahead and rear charge these guys. Again, I don't know what I was thinking. It's a nice nice gift for him. Uh, this unit's worth like 50 points, but with the target of opportunity, it's 150, so, you know, that's pretty awesome. And if these guys were back at the building, he wouldn't be able to hide this one fast cab unit behind the building. I'd shoot at him and eventually kill him with my throwing weapons. He would have had to run him behind a unit or something and I would have been able to shoot him with a cannon or something, but uh, yep, he's going to end up hiding those points for the rest of the game. I won't even mention it again, but yep, couldn't couldn't take those. Uh, the other Reavers go ahead and reform to pass this building. And here is the end of the movement phase. Uh, it's funny because he actually spent about a good solid 10 minutes just wondering what to do, because like, he's still out of long range, he knows I'm not going to move up to be in close range, but it's just a daunting army, he's going to spend another turn trying to shoot him up and send some magic into them, but the Phoenix Guard and the Silver Helms are just, they're not moving at all, <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny, it made me feel good because I had a scary enough army, I know gun lines are cheesy to begin with, but a gun line that you're actually not looking forward to moving towards, where you're not actually marching at, 
is even better. You know, a dwarf gun line, you get there as soon as you can. But uh, Milkov's Mystifying Miasma is casted, but I go ahead and dispel it. I do some epic dispels from in on out. Uh, he'll roll three dice, I'll roll three dice, he'll roll two dice, I roll two dice. And just because I have the plus four and he has a plus two, I end up dispelling a lot of his spells. Again, he goes for Ice Shard Blizzard, and I, you know, negate it. I proceed to do two wounds onto this eagle, but he charged, so he only lost combat by one, and he ends up sticking, which is annoying. Now I have to fight him in my round of combat, and I can't shoot. And over here we have another ogre gone, uh, probably from some bolt thrower shooting. And then we go ahead and have the... Noblars, the target of opportunity Noblars, break from combat, but he fails to chase them down, and they run right through the Silver Helms. I think I'd take a difficult terrain test, maybe lose a guy through the difficult uh, through the Silver Helms. Uh, I'm not going to mention them any further, but they run to the other table edge, but rally. So he never gets the uh, target of opportunity points for them, but uh, by the end of the game, they're rallied at the other table edge, which is funny. So I go ahead and make a charge with my Saber Tusk on Ogre turn 2 against this Bolt Thor, which makes me believe I probably should have made this one my target of opportunity because I have a chance of actually killing it. And to the left we have some Reaver casualties from another game. And here is my movement. Uh, everything backs up just a little bit. I have the Noblars ready to do either a double flee or have two difficult terrain test runs on the Silver Helms. The Bulls are making it around. So they're outside of the line of sight of the Phoenix Guard, so I mean, they could score a flank charge if they need to. They've got a couple different options, which is pretty great. Uh, and all the way to the far left, those uh, Leb Ultras back up this way. In case you wanted to charge through the quicksand, he wouldn't make it at all. These guys are still fleeing, but they'll rally next turn. I get a Stellar Magic Phase. I get Area of Effect Harmonic Convergence with a well-placed Comet of Casadora right there on that bullseye. So I proceed to unload two units of Lead Belchers into the Silver Helms, which allows me to kill five guys, because I still didn't roll grade. He rolled awesome armor saves. And then the last unit went into the uh, Phoenix Guard, and he soaked it all up with ward saves. Um, very good rolling on my opponent's behalf. But still five Silver Helms down. Big difference. Big difference. <laughs> and this happened in combat. Yeah, I, I don't get it. The eagle did a wound to me, which caused me to flee. It's so stupid. I, I can't. I can't. But on a more positive note, I do a wound to this bolt thrower, so my saber tusk is going to get some points. Good for him. And the other iron blaster back in shooting didn't really achieve anything worth noting. Uh, man, I can't kill the Silver Helm. I'm throwing everything I've got at him. I'm out of range of the Phoenix Guard from charging me, so I have turns to react. I've got Noblars to redirect. The Phoenix Guard, I'm just giving him a pounding, and I just can't seem to kill them. So we'll move into High Elf turn 3, and it's time to move in. The Silver Helms charge the Noblars. No difficult terrain test, unfortunately. I should have killed a guy on good probability. Uh, counter shooting his ship because he's got 2 up armor save. But look, he's only 3 inches away from my Comet, so uh, I'll take it. And the Comet proceeds to land, which is awesome. I uh, get the... Ooh. I hit my own Noblars, I hit the Silver Helms, I hit the Swordmasters, and I hit the Phoenix Guard, which is awesome. But it wasn't as great as I was hoping. I was only able to kill two Silver Helms. I rolled really low on the hits, because it's 2d6 strength, 5 hits at this point. I really thought I could kill a handful of Silver Helms, but I only roll up like 4 or 5 hits versus the Silver Helms. I was really hoping for a 12, because then I could just eliminate the unit. Uh, I kill a handful of Phoenix Guard. It uh, looks like 7 which is great. I rolled real high for them. I wish it was reversed. And the Swordmasters, I either didn't roll for or we didn't get to yet before this picture was taken. But yeah, so the, the, the Silver Helms are getting uh, a little small, so I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm feeling a little bit better. The Comet decides to completely wreck the Noblars, which is fine. And then I really guess we forgot to do the Swordmasters Hoeth, which is disappointing, but uh, I'll tell you, it doesn't end up affecting this game. So for the Magic Figs, we go ahead and try going with Mystifying Miasma, but I just spell it. 
And then he proceeds to get Ice Shard Blizzard off on this middle unit. So they're going to be at minus one ballistic skill, which is not good. And then in combat, we go ahead and overrun into the second unit of Noblars. And a difficult terrain test actually kills a Silver Helm, so I'm happy about that. But those Silver Helms are getting close. Remember, there's a Prince and a Noble in there. Uh, I guess Miscellaneous Shooting went ahead and killed one of the Lead Belchers in the middle unit. Also worth noticing is I kill even more Phoenix Guard, so he's down to like 10 guys with the hero in there, so 11 or 12. And because I killed so many from the comet and from shooting, I'm actually no longer in line of sight of the bulls, which is crazy. So the bulls have to come around, as you can see there, but this is the moment where you can go ahead and all give me shit because I make a charge with my freaking lead belt unit i'm doing an all in at this point i need to charge with the noblars to get them out of the way of the bulls getting in for some reason i thought this was a great decision because i have the slaughter master in there with a handful of attacks i have um three impact hits at strength five but you know what uh, the Noblars in the front, yeah, I'm going to lose combat res, but I really didn't think I was going to take any hit to the side because I was going to have Steadfast because I can kill, I could easily kill two Silver Helms this way. He has no Steadfast. I'll have ranks. I won't go anywhere, but we will have to see what happens. Nothing worth noting happens in the magic phase. In the shooting phase, I am able to use my Iron Blaster to kill out that uh, Bolt Thar, which gets me some points, especially since it's a target of opportunity. And you can see a movement. I moved the bulls around. I, I, I'm kind of in shit right now, but I've got nine bulls with a butcher in there ready to come around and finish off this hero. I know he's a lore master. He's good in combat, but I can come around, finish off this unit, get some victory points, get some target of opportunity points. During shooting, I kill five more. Uh, he's down to two Phoenix Guard and the hero, so that's going to get tight. It's getting tight. So, over here, this is where things get stupid. Uh, the Noblars, which are better than the Ogres in initiative, will go before the Ogres. So, I end up killing a Silver Helm with the Noblars somehow, between the, I guess, 10, 12 attacks, because 8 of them were already killed, which is expected. Which leaves me not touching the unit anymore, and he makes way with his hero, of course, the beginning of combat, and... I'm no longer touching the unit with my ogres. And also, when I made this charge, I was not thinking about make ways whatsoever. So he still has enough guys for steadfast. I lose an ogre from his hero, and I no longer have a rank to give myself steadfast. I break. He runs me down. He kills my general. That's pretty much the game for me. I'm going to play it out because I still have plenty of shit to work with, but that... <laughs> that sucked. That was probably a really bad decision. I stood I could have shot sat there and shot at the Phoenix Guard. I mean given I was at minus one ballistic skill, I might have been able to kill a few guys and finish off the unit, but poor decision making on my behalf. I need to stop charging with the lead belchers. I need to stop charging with the lead belchers. I need to stop charging with them. But anyway, here's what the overrun looks like. He clips this unit here, and I've got the heroes and the three silver helms left in the unit. I kill this Bolt Thor and reform to face uh, the archers. In high elf turn four, these guys go ahead and rear charge me. Not looking good. And then the sword masters, which are at full strength, because we never rolled a comet on them, proceed to come around and face the lead belchers. Hooray! And the lore master at this point, which has two wounds on him. I don't remember from what. Um, I think maybe from the the shooting into the unit it had to be randomized or it had to be distributed equally because there were less than x amount of guys in the unit uh he takes two wounds so i'm i, I he's almost dead but he runs into the freaking store master units with his brethren and will hide there for the remainder of the game and if things can't get any worse we go ahead and get whitsons off on these guys so they're going to destroy this unit they're with spears so they're not going to be strength five and this guy ends up getting killed by a bolt thrower, I think. I end up sticking here on Steadfast. And these guys go ahead and plow through as expected. Also notice that the two remaining uh, Phoenix Guard march 10 inches away from the Ogres and are now on the run. 
In Ogre Turn, I go ahead and make this charge for Shoots and Giggles, and I actually make it. I was like 18 inches away, and he did a solid, solid charge there. And uh, look at those Noblars just chilling out back there. But damn, he takes a wound, which sucks. But he kills two guys, which is awesome. And I flank charged, and I charged, and I somehow won, and I ended up breaking them, and I ran them down, which was like the most epic moment of the battle, which is sad, but awesome. And here's the last shot of the game that I have. This is what goes down. Essentially, I try to cast my little bone breaker spell at the running Phoenix Guard a couple times, but he keeps fleeing, he gets away, I can't... I can't freaking get the points for the units, let alone the opportunity uh, points. And he has a handful of troops back on the field. The ogres end up breaking and dying. I only killed one silver helm in the mix, so he's got two silver helms left. And the game just didn't uh, didn't pan out the way I thought it was going to. So I do take a, a zero on the 20-0 system, and then he walks away with like 24 points because he gets... Uh, or maybe it was like 23 points because he gets a couple of his targets of opportunity and whatever other objectives were in the scenario. So here's what I think for some post-game analysis. Fun game by far. Definitely really awesome. I had some really, really bad luck. Uh, my cannons did shit, so I'm hoping they do better in future games. They had some awesome opportunities to kill some expensive and important things. And the fact that I was not able to sideswipe five Silver Helms early game was very disappointing because that probably would have changed it as you saw it because the Comet probably would have went ahead and killed five more and he would have been down to none. Uh, so that was pretty important. That didn't happen. The charge, I can't say it was the worst decision. It wasn't a great decision. I mean, those guys weren't going to hit anything with their ballistic skill being uh, reduced. But it probably would have given me a turn to react a little bit better and just let one of those uh, lead belch units die instead of both of them. So... Yeah, I need to stop charging with the lead belchers. I've learned that. I think by this game, I'm done doing it, and I might do it like one or two more times throughout this uh, tournament in an important situation where I needed to do it, but I try to restrain. I try to use some self-control. Um, magic was pretty awesome. I did very well with my spells. I could have used another comet. Uh, I was able to dispel a lot of his spells. He came to the table with eight spells and a lot of dice with his power dice. And the Book of Helweth is always he's always re-rolling, so he's he's rolling two dice at a spell every time, and then going ahead and re-rolling the lower of the two, and he's getting them all off. But I was able to dispel a lot of them. Uh, definitely a great opponent. Uh, very tough list. I think it was a very good list. The Lore Master I think is is risky. But definitely in a tournament situation, you need all those different spells for some diversity. Um, he ends up getting two targets of opportunity. I only get one since the Reaver hid behind the building and the Phoenix Guard I left with two models on the battlefield. Um, my opponent proceeds to go on and win the rest of the tournament. He wins all of his games and comes in first place out of like 80, so props to him. Um, I walk away with zero points in this match, which is good. Now I can go ahead and play other losers. I was kind of hoping to win or I was kind of hoping to lose my first match this way I can start to get paired up with lists that are at an equivalence to the Lead Belchers because this list is so wonky it's uh, hard to say if it's good or bad but um, yeah so hope you guys enjoyed game one post questions and comments below and uh, I'll get game up two as soon as I can thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't goodbye